And so secondly, we look at taking the land. You know, first of all, crossing the Jordan, now taking the land. And the first city was Jericho. And so they did something strange again because the people in Jericho were terrified. This huge number of people had crossed the river. Now what were they going to do? Well, they were even more terrified because they started walking around the city of Jericho. And they did that on day one and day two, all the way through to day six. And finally on the seventh day, they walked around seven times and they blew their trumpets and they shouted and the walls came crumbling down and everybody in the city was taken except for Rahab and her family. You, you think, you know, why did God tell them to kill everybody in the land? Sounds like genocide. What the Russians are now doing in the Ukraine. But God had warned them year after year, and they had not followed Him. They've practiced following the false gods, and they had temples where there were prostitutes serving as a religious observance. They sacrificed infant, infant children as well. And we don't understand everything about God's plan, but we know that life itself is a gift from God, and God can take it away at any moment. And we also know that whatever God decides, it's going to be a different perspective than ours because we can only see the immediate. And so they took the first uh, of the cities without firing a shot. And then they were going to go on to the city of Ai. <clears throat> and they were told not to take anything when they got there, but to leave everything. But there was one man by the name of Achan, and he got a little bit greedy a lot greedy, and he found some gold, and he found a cloak that was really nice, and so he decided to keep those. He never expected uh, the consequences that were going to come, but as a result of that, they didn't even send all their soldiers. They thought they could easily take it, but they were routed, and when they consulted from God, they found the reason was because of this one man's sin. You know, the Bible says, uh, be sure your sins will find you out. And so because of what he had done, they had lost the battle and many people were killed. And so Achan and his entire family were stoned to death. You know, it's a serious thing to disobey what God has instructed us to do. And so that's what happened here at Ai. I, I was reading about some monkeys in New Zealand, and they have a unique way of capturing them. They take a gourd, and they make a little hole in the gourd, just big enough for a monkey to stick his hand in, but there are nuts inside. And the monkey will grab the nuts, but he won't be able to get his hand out, and he refuses to turn loose of the nuts. And so he is captured because of his greed. And I think greed is... Uh, the root of much of the evil in the world today. And the Bible says that God will judge uh, the living and the dead. And one day we're going to be standing before Him. Be sure, Roman, uh, Numbers 32, 23 says, be sure your sins will find you out. And then while they were there, there was also a tribe uh, only a few miles away from Ai, and it was the Gibeonites. And the Gibeonites had evidently heard, well, uh, God is not going to allow them to form an alliance with anybody in, this, in the country. But they could form alliances for those from outside. So they, they came up with this deception. They put on old clothes that were dirty and dusty, and they had sandals that were worn out, and had bread that was uh, moldy. And they appeared before Joshua and said, we came from outside of the country and we want to have an agreement with you. And Joshua did not consult the Lord. He said, okay, God allows that. But then he found out what they had done. And he could not break the agreement. And so he chastised them, but then he put them in charge of being servants within the temple. And later, they apparently were just absorbed into the Israeli population. Now, the last thing in this section of taking the land was as they established the different cities, north and south, they were given cities of refuge. 
And in the city of refuge, uh, it didn't provide permanent refuge for a person that had committed a crime. But uh, often if somebody killed another, his family would go and kill him. And so he could run away to one of these cities of refuge, and they would protect him until the truth could be found out. So these cities were placed strategically across the land as a protection. And in the same way, we know that Jesus is our refuge, but it is a permanent refuge. He stands before us. When we lived in Canada for some years, there was a lady that began attending our church. And she didn't talk a lot, and she kind of stayed to herself, but she and her children were very faithful in the church. And we found out sometime later that her husband had been abusive. And he lived some miles away, and so the government took her out of that situation and placed her in our town uh, so that he could not find her and could not harm her anyway. It, it was a place of refuge. And we know that Jesus is the refuge for our lives. Then there's the final thing, and that is following the Lord. You remember uh, when Moses became a very old man, he called the people together and he said, uh, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And now Joshua was a very old man. He was actually born in Egypt, spent 40 years wandering around in the desert, and was now in the promised land. He was one of only a couple that were allowed to do that. But as he grew older, he knew that his time was not long. And so he told them, follow the Lord, obey the Lord, and he will protect you, he will watch over you. But if you disobey the Lord, he is going to punish you and even take away the land that is given to you. And so he made the statement uh, in Exodus 32, 26, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. We often think that maybe there are three sides. There's one side and the other side and something in the middle. But not so with God. I was reading this last week about India. And India wants to remain neutral in the war the Ukraine. And uh, they think that maybe they can still buy weapons and oil from Russia, and they can be on good terms with NATO and the United States and other allies. But there was the concern in the article that they might actually lose both by trying to be in the middle. Uh, you know, the risen Christ says, I want you to be hot or cold, but not lukewarm because then I will spit you out of my mouth. Jesus said, if you're not for me, then you are against me. Everybody ultimately has to make a decision to follow Christ and to have an opportunity to go to the promised land or to reject him. There are never the three sides. I was reading about Van Zelen. He was the general under Frederick the Great. And Frederick was a scoffer, but the general was a devout believer. And so one day, Frederick and many other men were around, and he was laughing and scoffing about the Savior, Jesus. And everybody was laughing along with him, because he was the emperor after all. And then Van Zelen stood up, and he said, Sovereign, I've been faithful to you. I've engaged in 38 battles and won 38 of them. He said, I have always supported you, but I cannot stand while you mock my God and the Savior who died for me. He said, you know that I am not afraid of death, and I've always been with you, sire, but as an old man, I'm soon to be ushered into eternity. He said, Sire, I cannot stand this, and I uh, will accept whatever you decide, but I will follow my Savior. And Frederick, trembling, said, General, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. And everyone was silent, and they soon walked out of the room. 
all of us have to make a decision in life to follow Christ with all of our hearts and souls and minds or to reject Him. There is no middle ground. We sang the, the song as the prelude today, Stand Up for Jesus. And there, are you willing to stand up as this general did to the emperor or to anyone else? I, I was at Poncho's yesterday for a while and talking about how you know, he tries to invite people to come to church. You know, that's hard for some of us to do because, you know, the people that we invite might get annoyed or upset or just reject us. But if you stand first for Christ, then you must always follow him and nothing more. Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father who is in heaven. But if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Heavenly Father. Today I would ask you, are you willing in your heart and your mind to stand for Him regardless of the cost? Would you bow with me? Gracious God and Almighty Savior, we come before you. We love you. We desire to obey you. And Father, we want to follow as nearly to you as we possibly can. We know that this life is very short, and you are our all in all. Do forgive us today for our sins, and walk with us through this next week. For we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.